So today, I'm not going to share about formal education. And actually, when you think about what percentage of time that a child actually spends in school in a year, it's much lower than you think it is. My understanding in Thailand, it's 200 days out of the year, and it's seven hours, which is 1,400 hours. And you divide that by the 8,760 hours, and that comes out to be 15.98%, about 16% of the time. We put a lot of emphasis on school, and school's important, but there's a lot of time outside of that. And of course, about a third of the time we're sleeping, but more than 50% of the time a child is awake, they're outside of school. So the parents are the primary educators, but there's also a lot of time when the children are on their own and do a lot of their own learning. So today, I hope some of the things that I share will help reflect on some of that personal learning and some of the experiences I had and connect some of the dots. And what I'm going to want to share today as well really isn't relevant whether you have a lot of money or have zero money or almost zero resources. It's more about a way of life and a way of living life. So the focus today, because it's a youth event, is really for the for the children of the world and all over the world. And what I'm going to say obviously is relevant to adults as well, but I really want to emphasize and focus on and connect with the, the, the children and the youth in the audience here today. If I knew what I knew now when I was 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, I'd be quite a different person today. If I knew how important it was to listen from your heart and to speak from your heart and when you're thinking to be mindful of your heart when you're thinking I think I'd be quite a different person today than I am now somehow during life the curiosity is beaten out of us or through whether it's school or testing or metrics that we have while we're working, that part of this is lost. But if you think about the cure for boredom is curiosity. And there is no cure for curiosity. So I say to the youth today, stay curious. It's really, really important. Also, it's important to have mentors in your life. Sometimes it's hard when you're young to listen to adults, especially when you're teenagers because you think you know everything. But it's really important to find some mentors in your life that will share their knowledge and their wisdom with you. And our parents are very much our mentors. And we go through stages of life where we don't want to listen to our parents. And parenting's not easy. Parenting's really tough. I mean, parenting really is about limiting mistakes. But the sooner you accept your parents for who they are and look at them as mentors, in your life, I think there'll be some fundamental shifts. Unfortunately for me, that only happened when, just as my father was passing, and recently with my mother where I really did accept some of the challenges and the things I had as an inner child and let those out and really looked at my mom as a mentor and as actually a hero in many ways. So if you can do that early in your life, I think it will make a big difference. And if I did that, I know I would probably be a different person standing up here today. There's four C's in the Partnership for 21st Century Skills. And in today, more than probably ever, the collaborating and working together because the world is shrinking and we are interconnected more than we ever have been. Collaboration is very important. Communicating, sharing your ideas, communicating with others is important. So much information is out there now, big data. How do you take, how do you aggregate the information? How do you critically look at that information? So critical thinking is important. And creativity is hugely important. The world is changing faster than ever. Change is hard for people. How do you deal with change? Well, you deal with change by being part of that change, by making things and creating things. So the more you, during your life that you can make things and create things and strive towards excellence, that'll have a huge difference in, in your life and moving forward in regards to being able to deal with change and adapt to change. And if you can do that with other people, even better. We're all so connected. 
We're all so connected in our machines that we disconnect in a lot of ways. And my youngest daughter, I'm, I'm probably guilty of it more than my children are because I'm able to travel and work around the world because I do have a machine and I am connected. My daughter challenged me to one week without any technology. And, which I thought was kind of interesting for a digital native to be challenging an analog kind of guy like me. But, uh, and I did it, and it wasn't easy. But what I found was, which was great, is I reconnected with nature. And nature is so important in our lives, and I think as we get older, or with the digital devices we have, we're very much disconnected with nature. And really that is the purity in our life, is the nature, and connected with the nature. It's, it's hugely important. And I, like I said, I just came out of the mountains in Brazil, and the profound feeling that you have when you're in nature, and the different things that happen, is just absolutely phenomenal. So I would say to the youth today, get off your machines, and go out and play. Go into nature. And for the parents as well, make sure that your children are spending time in nature. And you don't have to have money to spend time in nature. Anybody can go and spend time in nature. There's parks nearby. It's hugely important. So I say to the youth, if, if I knew this when I was younger, I would probably have spent a lot more time in nature and probably look at the world quite differently than I do today. Food is hugely important. What's the number one export out of America? Obesity. <laughs> and it's kind of ridiculous recently, right, that Burger King and McDonald's were at Burger King was saying, hey, can we make like a Whopper Big Mac together and celebrate Peace Day? I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> food. Understanding food and what you put into your body because that fuels your energy. And even better, if you can grow your own food and be connected with that actual energy, the energy that you have and the clarity of your thoughts will be quite different. I just finished uh, one week on a very strict diet um, to purify. And it was so amazing how much that shifted how my energy is, the amount of energy I have, as well as how clear my thinking is. So be mindful of what you put in your body. And believe me, for a lot of years, I have not been mindful of that. I just finished a book for parents, because parents are the primary educators, and part of that is three Ps, and that's passion, purpose, and playfulness. And what tends to happen as we get older is we lose these three things. We have less passion for things. We're not really sure what our purpose is because we get stuck in life and the grind of life. And the playfulness, that inner child coming out, disappears. So it's really important to keep that playfulness in you. Find your passion and your purpose and connect those and use those three Ps as a real core for your life, moving forward in your life. And as some of the other speakers shared as well, don't be afraid to raise your hand. There's an expression that there's no such thing as, as a, uh, a bad question or a stupid question. And that's so true. Don't be afraid to, to voice your opinion and get up on stage and share your ideas. In high school and college, I avoided every class that had any kind of public speaking because I was so afraid of speaking. If you can, at a young age, develop that skill and feel comfortable with sharing your ideas or asking the questions, I think it'll make a huge difference in your life moving forward. Be mindful. Think about how you're thinking. Think about how you're breathing. So much in our minds, we have, we're negative towards ourselves. I'm not good enough. I'm not this. I'm not that. I'm bad. And we continually just get this cycle of how, what we're not and who we're not in life. But if you think about how you're thinking, if you're mindful, you can shift that. And mindfulness also involves breathing and meditation. And that's really huge in hitting a reset. So if sometimes in your life you can just think about how you're breathing or how you're thinking if you're mindful. That will make a huge difference in your life. And I wish I knew that when I was 14, 15, 25, 30, 40. <laughs> I'll stop there. And probably one of the most important things we have 
as our feelings, our sixth sense, and to connect with that and trust that. And one way to really connect with your feelings or your sixth sense is through your five senses, to be sensorial, to close your eyes, to really, to really touch something, to really hear something, to play with your senses. Because basically what's happening is we're getting information all the time from our five senses. And it's telling us things. And all that information together develops our sixth sense. And that's really what guides us in life. And so if you have a feeling, and when we're younger, that sixth sense is actually stronger because there's less things in our brain. So if you continue to really just feel and trust your feelings, most of the time they're right. And a lot of times decisions we make that aren't based on our feelings sometimes backfire on us. So your sixth sense and your feelings, stick with that and and keep that as part of your core. And I think your life will be quite different. The four directions. The more you understand the relationship of the four directions, which is the north, which is really the water, the flow, the river of your life, and the south, which is the fire, the fire that ignites your passion and your purpose. And in the east, the winds that change the direction of the fire or the, or the water. And then in the west, the earth, the base, the foundation, the home, and those four relationships. And the more you understand those and the earlier you understand those in your life, how much easier your life will be. Fortunately, maybe unfortunately in some ways, I just learned about those a few weeks ago. And I think they're gonna have a profound impact in my life moving forward, those four directions and the relationship between those two. So if you can understand those and let those be a guide in your life, you might have a different future. Something that I like to do when I'm bored, which is rare, because I'm very curious, is to find something that's extraordinary. And you know, you're walking along, we have so many visual things that are out there and something grabs you. It makes you stop and think because there's something about it that's different. Something about it's extraordinary. And there's a lot of things that are ordinary. And so, and a lot of times with the youth, you get bored or you're in a situation where things aren't interesting and, and you see, and so look around and say, what's extraordinary? What's ordinary? And how can I make it extraordinary? And if you do that enough, your brain, the neural wiring in your brain will start to allow for you to start making extraordinary things or seeing things in different ways and being able to adapt with the different changes that are happening. We have a birthday today. How many other people's birthday today? Is there anybody else in the audience's birthday? I promise I'm not gonna sing happy birthday to you. You don't want me to sing happy birthday to you. Yeah, we have another birthday here. So we have two birthdays. How many people in the audience here, it's their unbirthday? Yeah. Wake up in the morning and celebrate your unbirthday. There's 364 of them a year. And your birthday, remember to thank your parents and anybody else who's been significant in their life, but that's really what I think the birthday's for. But the unbirthday is to celebrate basically every single day of the year. So if you think about life in the perspective of the unbirthday, I think that would be quite different as well. And there is a Facebook page that I made that says happy unbirthday to you. There's about 600 people who are enjoying their unbirthdays on a daily basis. (laughs) Our two spiritual needs, or two of our spiritual needs, is to grow or give or learn and share. And when I speak with a lot of adults in corporate world or governments, and I ask them, what percentage of your time of the day are you growing or learning? And usually it's a decent percent. And think about yourself, what percentage of time would you think about you're actually growing or you're learning? And then you think about what percentage of time that you're actually giving or sharing. And for most people, that number's pretty small. And around the world, the youth today are trying to find more purpose in their life and find a way to give or share. But just keep that in your mind if you really wanna find true happiness, one of our two spiritual needs 
is to, to give or to share. Find opportunities to do that and you'll find that you will actually feel really good. And there's three, three kind of levels of giving and sharing. One is you give and you expect something and the person knows who you are. The other is you give and the person knows who you are but you don't expect anything. But the purest form is to give to somebody and they don't know who gave. So if you can live a life of giving and sharing in a way that people don't actually know who it is, there's kind of a pass on forward, pass forward kind of thing that happens with that. It's really beautiful. So please try to remember that throughout your life as you're growing up. So when you look at your, your crystal ball in your life, really think about your spiritual needs, the three Ps, purpose, passion, and playfulness, the four Cs, collaboration, critical thinking, communication, and creativity, and speaking and listening and thinking from your heart. And I really wish that I would learn those things much earlier in my life, but it's not too late. I still have a few years left in me. Thank you very much.